nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, Next, we're gonna we're still doing the public input the way we have been. You wanna? Yep. You want me to read it? Oh, I gotta read. Are we ready? Uh, I will be in a second. I guess I'm the public input. <laughs> Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, the first public input session will be a 15 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. A second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. Um, speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Uh, does, public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions, for example, matters involving personnel, cannot be made during public input. And there should be a live link on the agenda, right? Yeah. That people yeah. can yeah. email their questions to. Mm -hmm. right. okay. we, have, we have three public inputs, which I have not read yet, so I'm going to just like see how our own rolls off my tongue. <laughs> Um, the first is from Amy LaCourse in Lebanon. Uh, why isn't there more of a remote learning process for 9th to 12th graders on Wednesday through Friday? Uh, I have a 10th and 11th grader who basically have two days where they have no school. Our teachers going to be assigning work for these days. So yes, the students will be assigned work on those days. That came in on the 15th, correct? It did, yeah. So, so they haven't, we haven't had a full week yet. So um, students will be assigned work. Um, teachers will be grading. The reason why at that point we don't have um, teachers on remote at that time is they have multiple grade levels uh, that they're working with. So um, the students will be having assignments from those teachers. Those teachers just will be teaching other classes at that time. Okay. Kathy Sheehy from Berwick. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone involved in getting the students back to school. Sat 60 has done an amazing job keeping our children safe a lot of time and planning has gone into this school year, and my family is very grateful for all the work we've done. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. There's no but there. <laughs> no but. Uh, uh, this, and this one just came in a little bit ago. Rachel Buddy from Berwick. Why are our athletes not allowed to practice and scrimmage each other while we wait for York to turn green again? Others are allowing their students to do so. Thank you. So. We have air. <laughs> and that, I didn't even know that question was here, honestly. That, that came in just recently. So that's all we have, right? Do time. we want to address that now or when Aaron is uh, uh, just giving it that summary? Yeah, I can do it later. Okay, yeah, we'll, okay. Do it. we'll do it later. Yeah. It'll, okay. be, it'll, okay. it'll be responded to. So that's good, right? Um, okay. All right, thank you. So, minutes of uh, September 3rd. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, minutes of September 3rd. A second. Um, all right, I thought I had one. I did not. Okay. Um, since I can't see everybody, we'll do a roll call. So, um, all in favor, Linda Corliss? Yes. Travis Dwyron? Yes. Rebecca Hopper? No, not here. Uh, Stephanie Hagelboo? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. Uh, and me, Denise Mallet? Yes. All right. So I really want to say thank you because that's probably one of my first not amended. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I called, I spelled Travis's name right. That's okay. <laughs> Um, we've got a whole bunch of donations. We do. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a donation from Green Truck Farms to the Community Lunch Fund for $1,000. Mick Body Works and Truck Repair to the Lunch Program for $500. Raymond and Evelyn Pelletier to the Lunch Program for $500. Arundel Ford for Noble, the Lunch Program. First Parish Federated Church for the Backpack Program for 2000. Marcel and Jonathan Paletta for the Backpack Program for $1,000. Wow. 
Katie McClay for a book donation of 465 new and gently used books. Wow. Crazy, huh? That's um, awesome. Yes, that's great. So we do, do need a motion on that. I make a motion that we uh, accept the donations and put them in the appropriate account. I'll second it. Great. Um, Linda Corliss? Yes. Travis Dwyerin? Uh, yeah, my only question is, do we have to do it for each individual one, or are we good with a batching them all together? We could batch them, because I'll, I'll put them specifically in the motion, and okay. it's fine. It's all, uh, it'll be spelled out. Okay. Yes. Stephanie Hagaboo? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. And Denise Mallet? Yes. And thank you. Those are very generous donations. Yeah. Generous job. Yeah. Um, opening day enrollment numbers. Okay. Very curious. <laughs> sure. So this was done on Monday for our not our we didn't this does not count orientation. It's just for Monday, which was our first official day. <clears throat> so North Berwick had 96% um, attendance. Hanson had 96% attendance. Lebanon Elementary 96% attendance. Hussey had 97% attendance. Knowlton School had 93% um, attendance. Noble Middle School, 100%. Whoa, wow. Noble High School, 96% attendance. So those were. And that means at school, if they're at school, or remote. Yes. Yes. So I have some questions about that because there, I had heard from a number of people that like their kids were in class, but they were still getting messages that they were not. Um, is that something that you feel like was fixed at the time, or is that a, possibly a, a part of those numbers? I think it's been been fixed, okay. um, and I think it played into these numbers. Okay. Yes. Wow, that's great. It is good. Yes. And other feedback on the sure. How so are going. we will go through a few things. We wanted to make sure. Well, first of all, we'll start with enrollment. So enrollment right now is three thousand fourteen students, and that includes our remote and our in person. But those are somewhat moving targets. I think by October, we'll have better numbers for you. We are still getting some um, daily. We're getting some requests to go for homeschool. Mm -hmm. Then we're getting some requests to come out of homeschool. Right. So I think by October, our numbers will be more settled with that. Um, homeschool so or remote? Remote. Remote. Home. School. Uh, like, like, we have a few that have come back from okay. school. Oh, oh, okay. Gotcha. okay. So, so it's just a they're both moving targets mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And what? So, um, do you know what we were last year at this time? Last year, I believe it was thirty-one twenty. Okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. I'll have yes. I can find it for you. Okay. Carry on. I'll find it. Okay. <laughs> All right, and let's see. So a few other things we we wanted to just share with you. We know attendance is a piece. We've we've done an average of staff attendance, and our staff attendance from Monday to now has run um, 1.6 percent that haven't been here or less. So we're around 99 percent with staff. Some of those absences have been um, staff that are on maternity leaves or recovering from surgeries. There was a jury duty in there. Uh, so those types of things, because I know we wanted to really look at attendance for everybody across the board. Uh, so those are those pieces. We have had, um, we are still working on transportation and I think Brenda's on yep. uh, to just give an update on transportation. Uh, Brenda, do you wanna share a little bit about that? Sure. Good afternoon or good evening. Um, so we've been working really hard. Right now we have about 1,100 students on buses. Um, we have the highest numbers, of course, on our elementary runs, and we're still working with new registrations. Um, we only have 44 students left on the wait list, the original wait list that are K to five. And uh, the new registration list, we have 12 elementary and 12 middle high school students. Um, we did have food delivery on Wednesday and that went extremely well. And we've done some stuff with dismissals, uh, dual zone dismissals for the high school because it was 
so many uh, buses to di dismiss at the same time and that's going very well. Um, I had a little, we have a little problem with the, uh, one of the shuttle buses bringing fifth graders back to Lebanon today, but that will be solved. I've already taken care of it, it's solved for tomorrow. And I think that's all I have, unless you have questions. Um, this isn't necessarily a question for you, but I, I know that um, as expected, the pickups are taking quite a while. Is that something that um, we feel like is just going to kind of smooth out or, and it's just a, a volume? The bus issue. pickup or the no, cars? Car. Yeah, yeah. We're hoping it smooths out. We, we are practicing with the app and it is going smoothly. It's just a lot of, there's just a lot. There's a yeah. high number of pickups. So um, like coming into this building, it's been backed up on the road a couple times. Um, at Hussey School, they're doing construction right across the street, uh, yeah, which, has, right. which has compiled the issues at Hussey School that we always have at, at dismissal anyway. Um, Knowlton School, same thing, it's been out on the road. But I think once we get more, everyone gets used to that app, I think it's gonna move more. Yeah, it's just gonna take some practice. Yes. I just don't yes. know why they do construction in the first few years. I know, <laughs> right across from the school. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, Brenda. Um, what, what happens, I know you said we have a wait list of 44 students. As parents' schedules change, um, they, they might be working remotely at home now, but if they get called back to their office or where they work, how long is the turnaround time, do you think, for getting more kids, if, if more kids end up having to take the bus because their parents are called into work? Um, will we be able to accommodate those kids, or do you think um, they might just have to stick with the um, taking their children to school. I, I so, think, oops, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead, Brenda. I think we'll be able to accommodate a number of those. Um, right now, I have drivers uh, this evening, last night, uh, well, sorry, this afternoon, <laughs> um, tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon, they're doing attendance so that we can um, start to look at who's actually riding. I know we have a number of um, students that are signed up for a bus that just aren't using it. And that'll give us a better idea of what the numbers are actual, actually looking like. I know that um, a lot of drivers are showing a full list of students. Um, and then when we talk to them, they haven't had everyone. So they're not actually full. So I think we'll be able to accommodate more students once we get the numbers straightened out and uh, the schools are going to help make contact with parents that may not be using the bus but would have signed up for it anyway they're looking at uh, the numbers of students that are being picked up on the pickup app so um, I think what I was going to say probably within a week or so we can probably ask if there's anyone that that needs a ride that's uh, circumstances may have changed Thank you. So that means you think the wait list, within a week, the wait list and all the new registrations that we still need to place will all be placed? I believe so. I mean, we've been plugging away at them. Uh, Terry and I are both working on them every day. Um, I didn't get as much done today as I did yesterday, but we can get them situated fairly quickly. So um, it's just a matter of, of sitting there and getting that particular done without a lot of interruption. Right, thank you. How many shuttles do we have, Brenda? We have shuttles in every town as of now. We have um, two in North Berwick. We have um, two in, two or three in Berwick and we have three in Lebanon. But as I said, I think some of these numbers are not actual numbers, I think they're skewed by what we see for registrations. And I have one of the Berwick shuttles that we've set up. I don't even think she's needed to shuttle. I think she's been able to take all of her students with her regular run. So I think those numbers for shuttles might go down, but we'll keep them in place until we know that we can take everybody that needs a ride. Thank you. 
All right, so we visited, we spent some time visiting the schools and students are wearing their, their face coverings or face masks. And Sue has a couple pictures oh, that she took of the basketball, um, just a recess, Excuse me. socially distanced, with their masks, using the same, you know, the right, the right kind of distancing, more than fourteen. It's amazing. Um, the kids are so good. They like, are. They are way better than any adults. Right. Oh yeah. Well, right. So good. Yeah. Right. We had one student that we had to say, "I'm sorry, you can't be here," in all of the time. And that was last Thursday, and this Thursday, the student had the face mask on the entire time. Yeah. So um, that was tremendous. Yeah. Out of the whole district. So we did get a call from um, a, a community member just um, as reminding staff that they were eating at a picnic table and just wasn't they weren't sure that they were six feet apart, but they <laughs> were complying. But it's nice. It, what's nice about that is our community is, yeah. you know, they're paying trying attention. To, they are they're right, paying yeah. attention and they're, you know, concerned about that as yeah. as we are. So um, so just those those types of things. So. I, the staff feels, you know, it, the buildings feel good. We've had a real positive feedback from the staff about the care that went into the planning yeah. and all the, you know, the social, the dots and the circles and the stickers. And um, the, the administrative team just wanted us to relay to you how grateful they are that you um, provided that week for orientation. They really felt that that was so key to how this week has gone and how we're going to be moving ahead. And uh, just really grateful for that time. So that's that's that. Well, feedback from a senior is that week one was better than he thought, and the in-person day was way better than he thought okay. it was going to be. So okay. it didn't uh, like you said, Sue? I think they don't. They're not really phased by the mask thing. Yeah, they're they're, they're so just happy. happy to be back in school right. and yeah. like, see each other. Right. Even when you th there's a lot of mask breaks during the day outside here, they're keeping them on. Yeah. You know, they're going outside yeah. and they're just chatting. That's like the little ones. They're yeah. so yeah. funny. They're yeah. running around and like this tall running around. Um, right. And the other thing that's really been sort of the, the administrative team has been doing this all summer. Like we've been working nonstop all summer. So we feel like it should be January. Mm. But we're in this first <laughs> week of school, right? So there's lots of things that as we go forward will be tweaked, you know, to, you know, just to make sure that we meet the needs of stuff. But we're just at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but the kids are excited to be back. Oh, yeah. So it's nice to see yeah. them. Right. Right. And Aaron is here just to give us an update on athletics. We've had quite a bit of different none, right? That's the information <laughs> about <laughs> athletics um, throughout the summer. So. Aaron's going to give us the latest information and answer some of those questions. Sure, that would be great. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, I, I, I always do relish the opportunity to come in front of you folks. Um, most times it's to celebrate things like state championships or individual achievements or, or school accomplishments. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it's to, it's to give you an update this evening um, on our interscholastic programming. Um, sports are, in fact, going on. Uh, they're just not being done in a traditional way at this point. So uh, I'm here to give you an update on that. And obviously, uh, if you have any questions, um, I'll be more than happy to take those on tonight. Um, and what I can't answer tonight, I'll be more than happy to, to go dig and, and do some research and get that information to you. So um, just wanted to start off by saying that York County, uh, as you know, is designated yellow at this point, uh, it, which, which for schools is a hybrid model. And, and we're currently in that. Everybody understands that. But unfortunately, a yellow uh, score for, for athletics uh, means red. Um, this decision was made by the Maine Department of Education, Maine Department of Health and Human Services, Governor Mills, that whole conglomerate um, uh, in the decision-making process uh, made the decision that yellow means red, which essentially means no games, no practices, um, no in-person coaching or no in-person functions. So in that sense, sports is not happening. However, uh, the MPA fall season did start this past Monday on the 14th, and our coaches are remotely uh, coaching them. They're, they're continuing to do what they did over the summer, uh, encourage kids to stay in shape. Um, Cross-country kids are running mileage. Uh, football players are, are finding weights in basements, uh, doing, doing squat thrusts, doing burpees, doing push-ups, trying to stay in shape. Um, for that opportunity when we do eventually go green. And we do hope that that's coming. I think we all hope that that's coming. So our coaches are currently uh, working with our athletes. A um, lot of Zoom meetings, a lot of things going through Google Classroom. Our, our coaches um, 
are remarkable in that, in that sense. They, they do a wonderful job of engaging our students in this new age um, uh, of the COVID-19. Um, so we're hopeful that when we go green, that we do, and we do get that opportunity, I'll talk to you just briefly about what we're, what we're ready to do when that, when that green color comes. Um, a couple of, of things, if we do go green or when we do go green, um, the league that we're in, which is the Southwestern Maine Activities Association, the SMAA, uh, has made a blanket policy that no fans will be in attendance at our games. Um, the biggest reason for that is student safety. It's not that we don't want uh, mom and dad and, and family members to come watch children play on the field. It's really for student safety. Um, one, of the, um, one of the guidelines that the state has, has put on us is a 100-person mass gathering limit. And as you can imagine, at a football game, you've got you know, 40, 50 kids on one team, 40, 50 kids on another team. Well, you're almost at your 100. Um, so the SMAA decided that they were going to make a blanket policy and have no fans at games. Uh, this prompted uh, the athletics department to get two cameras over the summer. Uh, we have one already installed on the bourbon field uh, to live stream all of our games. So any game that actually takes place on our stadium field, which is football, soccer, we can play field hockey on that field, uh, lacrosse in the spring, uh, track events, the finishing line for cross country, all of those things can be live streamed. Folks sign up for that process and they get that, an opportunity to see those games take place. The other one is gonna be installed in uh, the Barrymore Gymnasium. Uh, so all of the indoor activities for wrestling, basketball, and anything that takes place on that uh, court um, is also live streamed. Um, other thoughts for, uh, um, well, that's basically it for high school at this point. I'll, I'll touch back on a couple of things in a minute. Noble Middle School uh, is part of a league called the SMMSAC. A lot of uh, letters. It's really South, it's a Southern Maine Middle School Athletic Conference. Uh, they have made a decision um, as a league to cancel all interscholastic activities. So the middle school athletes will not have a competitive sports season with, you know, sanctioned or sponsored games from our league. So most of those uh, reasons have to do with transportation, um, you know, the lateness of the games. Um, we're gonna play a lot of high school games if we get that opportunity under the lights. And that, a lot of that has to do with transportation. Um, there simply aren't gonna be enough buses to take kids at two o'clock to go to an away venue. So, and that was only gonna be more difficult with middle school. So the league as a, as a whole decided to, to basically cancel the fall season for competitive. Um, I would like to propose eventually, uh, when we get to that part, um, that we that we explore an intramurals uh, for them. Uh, we have almost 100% agreement from our middle school coaches who were designated to coach this year that they would be more than willing to work with our middle school athletes uh, in some sort of intramural fashion. We're continuing to shape that um, if we're ever given the green and the opportunity to do this. I know our coaches would relish that opportunity to have those kids roll out of school and, and do some intramural. Those would be voluntary, of course. Um, like I said, all of the, uh, all of the uh, middle school coaches are on board with that. We understand that transportation is still going to continue to be an issue in terms of an activity bus. Um, we'll work with, uh, with Brenda and transportation on that the best that we can. Um, I would hope that the parents would step up and be willing to, to drive and, and pick up their kids in the event that they were interested in doing some intramural activities. We can talk about that um, another time as well. Looping back to the high school, just three more quick bullets. Um, all of the emergency action plans for all of our athletic facilities have been updated. I'd like to thank Alex Fusco. He's our uh, full-time certified athletic trainer for really taking the lead on that. Um, each one of our fields has emergency action plan you know, for lightning, for heat, uh, if there were to be an accident. Those are all updated now to, to kind of jive with COVID-19 expectations. Uh, the protocols for each of those fields uh, and, and sports are ready to go. Uh, the MPA gave guidelines for each of the sports that needed to accommodate. As you're, as you're aware, most of the sports had some significant accommodations placed on them. And uh, unfortunately, football and um, volleyball were, were actually axed. Um, the, the MPA is currently exploring maybe doing that in the spring season, but that's still yet to be determined. All of the other sports have some modifications made to them. Um, one thinks cross country and golf would be relatively easy to do. Um, we believe that is the case too, and we're ready to go. The problem is, is that we're in yellow, and yellow means red for athletics at this point. Um, the facilities crew, Kevin Moore and his crew, they've got basically everything ready to go. What they haven't completed yet at this point, it's very easy for them to finish, whether it's putting a net on a field or finishing lining a field. Um, again, once we get the green, if we get the green, um, the, uh, the athletic department is ready to go. Um, we've, got, uh, we've got our sign-in procedures, the social distancing check-ins, the, uh, the, the, the questions that you have to ask all the athletes for screening that we do for, for attending school each day. We have that protocol in place and ready to go for the athletics. 
Um, and that's really all I have in terms of an update. Um, I'm sure you can tell I'm excited about what I do. Um, I really do enjoy, uh, you know, working with our athletes. They're they're starving to get out there, and we we hope that um, that folks uh, in, in our in our surrounding communities continue to wear their masks, keep their distance, and, and do what they can to get our kids back on the field. So. I have a couple of questions. Um, is the weight room available at all like even signups or did like is that something that's available for kids right now the, the 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 weight room on the inside is not open for for use it's not open for use for physical education um uh it's not open for use for our athletic teams at the, at okay. the moment um once we continue to hopefully those guidelines can ease up and restrict for us in the future uh, we wait for for that decision to be made uh, from the state level. Um, those we would be eager to open that up, but at this point, it's not available for for students, uh, even for physical education class. I think all the football kids should join golf or yeah. cross country. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone laughs, but uh, we, we are we are uh, we are ready for a surge in participation numbers for yeah. for those sports. Yeah. We've we've reached out for some feelers, and folks would be willing to step up and and uh, you know, keep the coach to student ratio in check and we'd have folks step up and help. Yeah. Um, we're just hopeful to get the green so that we can actually start. This well, and that's my other question is uh, what rate, like what is the, um, I, I can't remember, is it weekly that they're looking at this? <laughs> yeah. It was weekly for a little bit of time. The first time we hit yellow. Yeah. Then we were evaluated last week. Now it's two weeks. But, yeah. So it's for 20 yeah, yellow until next time. Yes. yes. <laughs> It's I your, thought if we were yellow, they were doing it weekly, but if you're green, you're doing it two weeks. That's what we thought too, Travis, but we Makes called sense. CDC today and a few other um, different places, and they said it's coming out next week. Hmm. Okay. It gives us some time to... Well, that was disappointing news for us, but um, you, you, you can't focus on what you can't control. Uh, we were hopeful to be evaluated weekly. Yeah. Um, we're unsure of what it takes to get to green. We don't know that. Yeah. Um, we don't know if it's a number or if it's a pattern. Um, I guess what I would anxiously like to see that information because I think that's a great goal to have. Yeah. We can really focus on what it would take to be green. But until then, we just we ask that folks do what they can to follow follow the guidelines that are out there for us. We'd like to we'd like to get this back for our kids. Mm. It's too bad the guidelines weren't the same for communities as they are for no schools right. because it's oh, yeah. Yeah. So very confusing. Mixed messages yeah. to the towns because Absolutely. they're offering. Uh, like soccer, yeah. but and football, and and that yeah. you know, it just yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. The community it's, guidelines for athletics are different. They they're in a different tier. Um, I I can't explain that. Yeah. Um, but those guidelines are a little bit different. Um, in, in terms of spectators, in terms of numbers of kids, uh, those types of things. Yeah. So the, you know the community sports programs are still open. I would I just want to say I know everybody sorry, but the Sanford. I assume the athletic department put out, they had the kids actually make yeah. a video. Was, yeah. I think it was all the captains of all the teams, great. I could tell. It was awesome. I mean, these kids have it way better than the parents do. I mean, yeah. they're all over it, so. Yeah, well, Mr. Anyway, that, that's a great point. That was gonna be my finishing thing. Sorry. Oh, no, I, I appreciate that you brought it up. It was a completely student-led production. Really? Um, it, it wasn't organized by, I mean, it was supervised by, you know, someone either from the athletic or the, or the tech department, but that was a completely student-led project if you get an opportunity to check it out it's yeah, on facebook it's on or the sanford high school class. website page but it's basically a public uh you know a plea you know please please wear your mask please give us a chance to get out on the field and do what we want to do so. cool. if you me. folks end up having questions later on don't hesitate to reach out or if, or if you get other questions um i'm excited to help out any way i can thank you thank you Thanks. thank you great and that was gonna be the last part of my update on the start of the school year was just that we uh, were under the impression that when you're yellow, it's every week until you're not yellow. But after contacting some just key people at the state level, they had said that, nope, the next one that comes out is for the whole state and that will be next Friday. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I have one, two questions. Um, the do we have a, a sense of and sorry this, these are for under just more of the overall update but um do we have a sense of how different the kindergarten class is and i'm sort of also just thinking ahead that uh, so as far as kids that were eligible but didn't enroll at all 
Sure. So I, that varies by school, but for example, like Huzzy has 59 students currently in person. We usually run at Huzzy School about 100. Okay. Uh, so in, How many remote in June, there? we had, in June, there were about 70 registrations. Yeah. So remotely, it's going to just take a while. Right. I got to okay. work, work it. Okay. There are a lot, I think, no. There's about 40 students across our district in kindergarten that are remote. Yes. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Yes. That are fully remote. Fully remote. And then, well, what I was thinking was more the ones that didn't enroll at there, all, there like that, were, that basically held them back. Right. There are some that enrolled and then pulled out from enrollment saying they were going to come in person next year yeah. as well. So, so we, yeah, we suspect we that that list right. is going to be big. Yeah. yeah. We don't necessarily big. know what those numbers right. look like right. yet because some kids didn't even get the yeah. right. register yeah. at all. But yeah, we're going to be looking at a large, we're going to have a bubble year. Large, large kindergarten. Yes. Yeah. I have right. sort of kind of a related question about enrollment. I've heard a couple of things that some of the Remote classes are getting pretty big. They are 25, 26 They're, kids. Yes. Yep. And we're Do we have any plan right. like maybe splitting some of those and getting another teacher there? Or? We're looking at, at adding some supports in to help like with the literacy block yep. because that's the time consuming piece. Yeah. And that's the part that takes a lot of, you know, the one-on-one, the, -on -one, the small group, the two students at a time. So those are where we would likely put the support. Yeah. Um, but yes, if we if, certainly if we get you know at a number that feels like we need to add a, cl a class, we would yeah. certainly do that in a split. Um, yeah. Th that sort of leads into my other question: was how are we looking at overall staffing? Do we still have vacancies? How do we feel like we've filled a lot of them? We have filled uh, with the nominations tonight and your approval tonight. We're pretty filled. Don't say no. Yes, we're pretty filled Don't say no. at the Don't moment. Say no. <laughs> um, However, if we have a surge of students that um, want to go remote and we don't have a teacher that we can pull from in person to go remote, because sometimes if it's like, say if you have 15 fourth graders who all of a sudden across the district go remote, then you have a teacher that you could potentially have go remote as well. Um, so if we have those opportunities, we would certainly take them rather than necessarily hiring somebody. Um, but if we have to, if we have to look at making smaller class sizes, and if we have to hire, we will we'll advertise for that. And that's, some of that comes out of the CRF funds yeah. and the CARES Act, but some of them, you know, may not fully be covered. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of um, coming yeah. in. Hopefully it comes as we figure it out. Yes, yeah. yes, right. I think um, just with the feeling that we are getting with parents feeling like the schools have been very safe, and very purposeful in how we went about uh, planning the buildings that hopefully over time some of that confidence you know will come will come back uh, just because you know the unknown in the community is is scary sometimes just with what's going on so thank you thank you thank you all right um, so employment, and just before we do all these, can I be reminded what uh, we need to vote on, and do they, can we do them together? Yes. Yes. So, yes. The, okay. the new hires okay. are all we have. Okay. We don't have any resignations or retirements. Okay. So that would be the only motion for those. Okay. Okay. All right, so we have Kristen Sorelli, who is a new Noble High School guidance counselor. She was previously an ed tech in Gorham, an ed tech three, while she was um, getting her degree. Um, so she joined us last week. Amanda McDougall has joined us at the 4-5 building, which is the middle school. And she is coming from, she was the case management director at Compass Behavioral Health. So she has joined us as the school counselor. And then we have Tina Demers, who worked as a speech and language clinician in Lisbon School Department. And then when she moved down here, she was working most recently at Marshwood, and she was just hired for us as a speech and language therapist. And then we have Stephanie 
Sakazini. <laughs> I have to practice that one. I'll practice that one. Um, she is going to be the new literacy coach at Huzzy School, and she's most recently coming as a from a tutor position in Stratum. But when she was in Rhode Island, she worked as the literacy consultant for Lincoln um, in Lincoln, Rhode Island. Those are our new um, hires pending your approval. Do we want to have a motion that we accept those new people into the family? Into the family. And I'll second that. Thank you. All right. Um, Linda Corliss? Yes. Travis Doran? Yes. Uh, uh, Stephanie Hagabu? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. And Denise Madlet? Yes. All right. Is the superintendent report different than uh, what we just? <laughs> I don't think so. We had this was taken off the agenda at the end of June, so we just put it back on because okay. it hadn't been on. But so you don't need it'll to be a while before anymore. you don't have a regular uh, slot on here anyway. Right, right. <laughs> um, do we have any others? Any other? Yes. No. Really? You sure? <laughs> well, I'm just hoping that the curtailment is not going to affect us too badly. Right. And I'm, I'm anxious to hear okay. what that, that's going to be. Do we know sure. anything? We, we don't, but Denise, um, when we were talking to Denise Van Kampen this afternoon, we're going to put her on the agenda for probably the, right at the beginning of October or the next meeting. Uh, we have our um, audit coming up. So we'll, we'll some get some information and she'll come in and we'll right. go through all of that. So the one thing I'd just like to throw out there, having done it before, that if we do get a huge chunk, <clears throat> that we look at a budget freeze, spending freeze, with everything except for you know salaries and benefits and utilities and stuff like that. I would rather do that than have to cut positions because I don't think we can afford to, right. to do that. Right. 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 Well, it'll be interesting to see how if the CARES money goes into next year and. So I do have one other other. Um, can we get an update or a status on the subcommittees for the facilities and finance and budget or not budget uh, building committee that we were working on that has kind of disappeared now? Yes, we will. We'll get a, a Google document out. I thought that went out before, but we'll get that out tomorrow. Do we have any time frames on when we're going to start those meetings back up on the facilities or are we still in a holding pattern? I think on the facilities, we were in a little bit of a holding pattern um, since the last conversation with the architect and the facilities and finance. We can have initial meetings, but we haven't laid out the, the kind of the budget schedule quite yet to start yeah. that. Yeah, it was more or less the other the. The other aspect is I know we had some time frames and stuff like that we were trying to meet and I don't we're we've kind of disappeared for now so right I would love for our next meeting just to have a little kind of refresher <laughs> um, from facilities and okay. finance perspective sure. because it's been a, been a while. I don't really okay. remember where they slept. Right. Well, the construction committee, we had kind of we're in, put it we're in hold anyway because we weren't going to put it to vote. Right. So, right. so that changed not really much we mm -hmm. can do. But we can still update it. Yep. We yeah. Go through and get everybody up to speed again. Maybe even just a reminder where it held, mm -hmm. like where, where were we with it. Okay. So just all those committees just yeah. update on where we are. Yeah. Okay. And then how we, yeah, I guess what we need to do going forward. Right. If who wants to join what committee? Yes. Yeah, we have some new members we want to assign a committee. Okay, if we don't have any others, we get a motion to adjourn. Is there any more um, public input? Oh, uh, there was not more public input from when I just checked it. Okay. 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 Well, there's a motion to adjourn then. I'll second. second. Oh. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, so who was that? I made the motion. Okay, a new second. Yeah. Um, Linda Corliss? Yes. Travis Dwyer? Yes. Stephanie Hagenboo? 
Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. And Ms. Mallet? Yes. Thank you.